Hello and welcome to another episode of Analog Insights. Today's episode is special because Greg and I drove all the way out to the holy city of Wetzlar um, in order to shoot a comparative review of two special cameras from the mid-1970s. And these two cameras came out of a collaboration between the German Ernst Lights company, which later became Leica Camera AG, and the Japanese camera manufacturer Minolta. And these cameras are of course the Leica R3 and the Minolta XE. And interestingly, they share most of their parts, um, but the Leica version comes with some small refinements and updates. Let's take a closer look at these two beautiful cameras. So let's get some historical context first. In 1972, Ernst Leitz and Minolta cooperated for the sole purpose of creating a less expensive rangefinder camera that would support M-mount lenses. The result was the Leica CL or Minolta CL respectively, and we've reviewed this camera here on the channel before. And with respect to single lens reflex cameras, um, the situation was a bit different because Leica had um, introduced the Leica Flex SL in 1968, then an updated version, the SL Mod that supported a motor drive in 1972, and then the Leica Flex SL2, which you can see here in 1974. All these cameras were completely mechanical, quite hefty, um, beautifully um, smooth and, and really precise but unfortunately commercially quite unsuccessful. <laughs> According to many sources, um, Lights actually put more money into the production of the SL2 than they were able to recoup selling it um, afterwards. And they were basically betting on selling lenses um, in addition to the cameras in order to make enough money um, with the entire um, sale. And in addition to, and that came in addition to the um, commercially quite unsuccessful Leica M5 that had already been introduced in 1971. And that all, of course, put quite some pressure on lights um, in the 1970s. Um, furthermore, the single lens reflex um, camera market was moving fast and um, cameras became smaller, they became smarter. So that is the time um, when the Olympus OM-1 and then the more advanced OM-2 were released. And in 1976, we already see the Canon AE-1 and the Pentax ME, for instance. So this is the context that we're facing. And um, then interestingly, in 1974, Minolta had released the XE to quite some commercial success. In Europe, the camera was known as XE1 and North America as XE7. And Leica quickly turned to um, Minolta to basically um, share their insights and created the Leica R3 based on the design of the Minolta XE. Then this happened. It turns out the Leica R3 had a problem with its mirror not flipping up completely and always showing in the frame. Unfortunately, in a similar fashion, the Minolta XE um, repeatedly underexposed some of our frames based on the readings it got from the built-in light meter. So this is a perfect example of what can happen in analog photography and if you're shooting film. You only find out later on um, and even after you did a trip of 800 kilometers. But nevertheless, we just wanted to show you some of the images that worked out and even some including the mistakes because this is all what, this is what shooting film was all about. So 
So what are the similarities and what are the differences of these two cameras? Visually, the Leica R3 and the Minolta XE are very similar. So you do have the basic same layout. Um, so the functions and buttons and switches are all in the same place. But if you take a closer look, there are a lot of differences, especially internally. The Minolta XE1 was, as mentioned before, first introduced in 1974 and it came with a newly developed electronically controlled um, copal focal plane shutter with speeds ranging from 4 seconds up to 1 1,000th of a second and both an automatic exposure and a manual exposure mode. In the aperture priority manual or in the aperture priority auto exposure mode, um, the shutter speeds varied staplessly, while in the manual mode they come in full stop increments. Interestingly, um, the camera has a very short shutter lag of only 38 milliseconds, which is really among the best of any camera manufacturer. The Leica R3 was released in 1976, so two years after the um, XE, and used the same shutter and mirror assembly, but it came with an uh, improved exposure measurement, or two different exposure measurements, and a better shutter control system. Um, so as Greg is indicating here, it has a switch to um, choose between spot metering and the center weighted averaging meter that is built in. Um, the first uh, Leica R3 was um, still built in Germany, but then the production was quickly moved to the Light's um, production in Portugal. And just for clarification, because there are different versions out there, um, in 1978 the Leica R3 electronic was complemented by the electronic mod, a later version that also supported a motor drive. So which lenses are available for these two different cameras? The Minolta XE is compatible with all the Minolta MC mount lenses that personally I consider to be simply outstanding. And if you've taken a closer look at this channel before, you might have noticed that I've reviewed a couple of these MC lenses before. And interestingly, um, I'm actually shooting these living room scenes um, with the 35mm f1.8 MC mount lens. And I can highly recommend these lenses for both digital and analog um, purposes. Um, for our trip to Wetzlar, um, Greg also brought some special lenses that came out of the collaboration between Minolta and Leica. So they were also giving back and forth some knowledge about optical design and lens design. And um, um, we used the uh, 28 to 70 millimeter zoom lens um, in two different versions. Uh, one version for the Minolta mount and the other one for the Leica R3. Um, for the Leica R3, the entire range of R-mount lenses was modified to what is called a 3-cam specification. And here I have to look a little bit um, at, at my sheet here, because the SL cameras used a control curve, which was uh, an inclined ramp. And this ramp moved the corresponding control element inside the lens um, forward or backward, giving the information about the aperture to the light meter. And the SL2 worked with two control curves, while the earlier SL and the Leica Flex had only one. With the switch to the R cameras, um, Leica started to use a rotating cam inside the lens, um, which transported the circular movement of the aperture ring to a corresponding um, also rotating receiver in the camera body. And this system was used until the R9 and is the so-called 3-cam specification. And it was later extended um, with electrical contacts, the so-called ROMs, and these late ROM lenses fit only to the R cameras. So the most versatile bayonet for R cameras is the so-called 3-cam um, bayonet, which provides two control curves and the rotating cam, and means that these lenses are compatible to both the older Leica Flex um, SL and SL2, um, and also to the R3 and all the way up to the R9. 
Since Leica offered an upgrade um, to 3-cam specification, it is hard to find any kind of 2-cam or single-cam designs on the used market today. So that is important to mention. So you are able to tap into this entire pool of Leica R-mount lenses usually, but take a look at 3-cam specification when you do so. So how do these cameras handle and do you feel the differences? And that was of course the big question, knowing that they share so many parts and have the same design. And here, the bottom line for me was, yes, you feel quite some difference. Um, the Minolta XE feels like a Minolta, which means it's a really decent, really good camera, but it's not a perfect camera. It feels like a 90% camera. <laughs> It is good, it's nice, um, it has a decent and good um, shutter sound, um, it feels okay, the, the lenses handle okay, um, but again, it's not perfect. And then picking up the Leica R3 in contrast, and especially if you press the shutter, you feel the difference. It's okay. Um, it's mechanically much more precise. It's a beautiful design. Even little details are made with much more care and attention to that kind of detail. And looking at how the cameras age, it, it also feels like the Leica's age better. Um, and of course, this is also related to the entire package because not only is the camera um, designed in a better way and feels more solid and more precise, but also the lenses. So even the lenses that we could actually prepare one to one because they share the same lens design, um, the Leica one always felt better. And knowing that you can tap into this entire pool of um, Leica and Lights, um, Sumicrons and Sumilux R lenses, um, this of course makes it much more interesting. So it all comes down to price. Are you willing to invest a premium price, um, a little extra to get these additional 10% of quality? Um, then I would recommend to go for the Leica R3. Um, if you already have a set of um, Minolta lenses and are good with that kind of quality and appreciate it anyways, then you should rather take a closer look at the Minolta XE, in my opinion. So personally, I wouldn't be able to decide because um, <laughs> I already have uh, a Minolta XD7 and I have a lot of um, lenses for it. So. Um, I would be more inclined in getting into the Leica R um, system and yet I already have a Leica M mount system. I have my contacts, my aunt's old contacts, um, which also feels very solid. It's such a beautiful camera. So there's no reason to get another single lens reflex camera. Um, so these are my personal impressions and you can already hear I'm, I'm kind of undecided. Um, handling wise, I really preferred the Leica and it felt much more solid and precise. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the special episode of Analog Insights and this comparative review of the Leica R3 and Minolta XE1. If you did, please remember to like this video and maybe even share it with your friends. And if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to our channel. Jules, Greg and I really appreciate it. Thanks for watching. We hope to see you soon. Bye.